So I've been shaping my own surfboards for a few years now, and it's difficult for me to articulate how much more enjoyable it has made surfing for me. When you take off on a wave and you just rip the hell out of it, and then you kick out, you start paddling again, you just got this giant smile ear to ear thinking, like, yeah, I just did that on something that I made. And on the contrary, if you take off on an overhead closeout that you have no shot in making and you just get absolutely clobbered by this thing, you still kind of think to yourself as you float on this little piece of fiberglass and foam in between your legs. Like, this thing only exists because I decided to make it exist with my hands. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking a little too deeply into it. And even with the boards that I make, they, they don't look all that great because I'm still learning. I'm still relatively new at this. It's not like they're perfect. They're always going to be a little bit asymmetrical and they're always going to have their little quirks about them. But that's part of the fun is figuring that out as well. Yeah, you know, I've made probably close to about 10 by now and I would say a majority of them are pretty shit. I mean, you can just see it in my face as I talk about like this one, for yeah. instance. But occasionally I make something that, you know, surprises even myself. And I say, wow, that actually turned out pretty okay. Right now, I'm in the process of shaping a board for a close friend of mine. And this is the first time I've ever done something like this before. All of my boards, you know, I haven't had this overhead pressure while I was shaping before because I knew what I'm making, it, it's for me. And if it's fucked up and I don't like it, whatever, it, it's just me. But when I'm making something for somebody else, you want them to like it. And, and John gave me a, a, some dimensions. He gave me a few different boards that he wanted me to seek inspiration from. He gave me a specific feel that he wanted in the water. And I'm kind of fucking scared. <laughs> because I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. But I guess we'll see. Anyways, th this, is, this is a story about that board. Right now, I'm just sanding the top of the board. Because what happens when you take these things from the factory, there's all sorts of glue and residue left over on the top of the deck that you want to sand down. Once you get that kind of smooth, you really don't want to touch the deck anymore. You do all of your rocker and your thickness pretty much from the bottom of the board. You kind of want to leave the deck where it's at. Now that I have my rocker set and I went around the board and I checked to make sure that the thickness was right in a bunch of different spots, make sure that it was all even, I'm going to start adding the concave in. The way that I do it is my little hand plane. I shave down a bunch and then you kind of just hollow out the, you know, the bottom of the board right here. I'm thinking I'm just going to do a pretty standard single concave and do a little bit of V. Um, that's a combination that seems to just work really well for not just myself, but a lot of other people as well. part is when it's just starting to come together. Mm -hmm. 
That's what a rail is supposed to look like. You know, it actually turned out kind of okay. There's a few little imperfections that I can see kind of around the board. But I mean, they're so minuscule, I don't think it'll really affect how it's gonna ride. I mean, maybe it would, but I don't think I'm a good enough surfer to really be able to detect, you know, those, those little impurities. Right now, the shaping is mostly done. I think what I'm gonna do I am going to use a little bit of that lightweight spackling just to kind of fill some of these craters that I couldn't really get out with 120 grit. You sand that down, get it nice and smooth, and then painting. One of the things you're supposed to have when you uh, make a surfboard and you want to start installing your fin plugs so you're supposed to have something called a shaper square, which essentially allows you to measure from the stringer, from the center line of the board, and place your fins where you want them to be with the proper angle. Um, I'm too cheap to buy one of those, they're only like 20 bucks. And something that I used to do as sort of a career was, I used to drive ships around. And as a navigation officer, you use one of these things a lot, and it's for plotting courses on an actual paper chart. I don't really do that so much anymore, so I've sort of just adopted it into shaping, and I, I use it to measure where I want my fin plugs to be, and it's kind of been working so far. Probably come out a little better if I just spent the 20 bucks and got a shaper square, but yeah, this is working for now. Nailed it. <laughs> so at this point I'm I'm starting to get really fucking scared. The board's almost done. And that's the thing, is there's no there's no danger in what I'm doing. And the reason why I'm getting scared is just because for some reason I just fucking care. All I have to do right now is put the leash plug in and then just sand the shit out of top and bottom. That's it. The board's done. We've actually got pretty decent swell going in right now. And we're gonna have to drive a little bit tomorrow morning. Uh -huh. Top of the morning to ya. I can't find my wallet. <laughs> if I just pay you back for whatever. Johnny. Falling down the hill. It's kind of like the stars are aligning and it's going to be the perfect time to show John the board, you know, right before we go paddle out. So 
if he likes it. That feels really good. <laughs> that feels really good. <laughs> 